This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, March the 12th, 2019. It's the feast day in the traditional calendar of Pope St. Gregory the Great. He was Pope from September of A.D. 590 until he died today in A.D. 604. Gregory seemed destined for greatness. He was the son of a prefect and was himself prefect of Rome in his year, as they say, of the cursus honorum at the age of 30. He's famous for lots of things, depending on your area of expertise in the church, but none perhaps so significant as his codification and encouragement of the monastic plain chant, which went on to be called Gregorian chant a few centuries after his death. He was also a prolific writer and is still called Gregory the Dialogist, for his many works using the dialogue structure. He was also the first pope to launch a large-scale evangelization effort. The so-called Gregorian mission traveled to England in hopes of converting the pagan Anglo-Saxons into good tea-drinking chaps who could be counted on for a scone and a bit of cribbage after Sunday Mass. St. Gregory was a truly gifted man and pope. Nowadays, his feast is on the calendar for September the 3rd, but for about a thousand years, we celebrated it today. Today in 1622, another Pope Gregory, this time Gregory the 15th, was busy offering Mass in Rome to celebrate the canonization of Saints Ignatius of Loyola and Francis Xavier, the two great Basque saints of northern Spain who founded the Society of Jesus, who are known today as the Jesuits. The Jesuit order has had a bit of a stormy history, They've generally been incredibly good or right on the edge of being suppressed and banned by the church. Ignatius had the idea for the order while he convalesced in Pamplona after taking a cannonball to the leg. The idea swirled around in his head and he shared it with a few friends. And when Francis Xavier heard the idea, he jumped on it. They were to be a military style order of men available to the Pope in particular who could be sent anywhere for any mission on basically zero notice. They were to be the special forces of the Catholic Church. And in many ways, they were and are. Francis Xavier himself went to Japan and India. The Jesuits were the evangelizers of the North American Indians. They went everywhere, and wherever they went, they made converts. Even today, despite troubles in the last 50 years with publicly disobedient Jesuits like James Martin and Ernesto Cardinal and Robert Drynan, the order has begun to right itself and many excellent young Jesuits are beginning to stand by the mission set for them by their founders Ignatius and Francis Xavier, whose canonizations we remember today. And finally today in 1894, the first pre-bottled bottle of Coca-Cola was sold in Vicksburg, Mississippi by Joseph A. Biedenharn at his local soda fountain. Fifteen years later, he moved his operation a two-hour drive up Highway 80 to Monroe, Louisiana, where he invested and later bought out a small crop dusting company located halfway between his old home in Vicksburg and his new one in Monroe, in a tiny little community two miles from Mound, Louisiana, that was simply called Delta. He eventually added passenger planes to his crop dusting fleet. And Delta Airlines later moved its home base from Monroe, Louisiana to the state capital in Baton Rouge and then on to Atlanta where it is today. And coincidentally, just a few miles as the crop duster flies from the shiny home base of Coca-Cola. The Catholic Daily Journal was supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.